guys, it's Sydney Galpern and welcome back to Sydney Sweet Adventures. I am super excited to have you back this week. This month I have decided to do a Christmas in July theme because I decided why should Christmas only come once a year? We should do a Christmas in the summer. So we are going to be doing Christmas themes all month long with both of my episodes. So this week I'm going to be showing you how to create these really, really beautiful and intricate holiday cookies using an isomalt fondant gum paste, a whole bunch of different techniques. But we're mainly going to be focusing on making window cookies, doing stained glass, we're going to be doing some blown isomalt for our reindeer, we're going to be doing shaker cookies. There is so much that I want to show you this week, so let's get right into it. I'm Sydney Galpern, owner of SeeMeCakes.com, and I'm a sugar artist. For the past 13 years, I've specialized in isomalt sugar, traveling the globe teaching my techniques to the world. I'm the inventor of Simi Ice Malt, and both my parents now work full time for me, which is fun, most of the time. Follow me on my journey creating awesome works of sugar, chocolate, and cake art. Whether I'm in the studio or hitting the road, come along with me on my sweet adventures. Okay, so we are going to be making a lot of different cookies today, so we're going to jump right into it, starting with just a basic clear window cookie. So for the cookies themselves, we are starting off with a construction gingerbread recipe. So this is my recipe that you can find on my website, seemacakes.com, and it's basically just a super strong and hearty and durable gingerbread recipe. So I use this for all of my cookies because my cookies are generally going to be for a display, so I want them to last a long time, I want them to hold up against humidity, and um, yeah, I just want them super, super sturdy. So that's why I'm using a construction gingerbread. But you can apply this to any kind of cookie recipe that you would like to. If you have one that you always use, you can absolutely apply it to that. I've tried this technique and all these techniques with a whole bunch of different cookies and it works with, uh, with you know, with any kind of cookie dough that you use. So um, these are the cookies that I'm going to be using. I've already pre-baked them according to the recipe. Again, you can find on my website. And uh, yeah, my trick to getting nice flat cookies, I do roll them out pretty thin because they are construction. They are going to be sturdy. Uh, and then when they first come out of the oven, I press down on them with a fondant smoother and that is just going to make sure that they are nice and flat and I did use templates for this and so the templates again can be found on my website but I have all of the different windows um, you know the different centers that cut out of them for all of the cookies that we're going to be using today and I also use these for the fondant parts as well so that they fit exactly so if you're interested in that check them out on my website but of course you can use any kind of cookie cutter that you have any kind of uh, template that you want to use you just basically need a cookie with a hole in the center for this technique so we are going to start out with our first window cookie here and we're going to be pouring a clear center window inside of it. So just starting out with the basics and then I'll talk about adding more designs and different things onto it as we go. But basically we are going to be using Simi Ice Malt today as always. Simi Ice Malt is a pre-cooked hard candy. It's all sugar free, it's all completely edible and it's ready to use. So basically you just melt this down and turn it into a liquid and that is it. There's no temperatures or recipes when it is pre-cooked like this. All you have to do is melt it. Now I have my recipe, remember, on my website of tempering it from scratch, so if you're interested in learning how to cook the raw powdered ice malt to turn it into this, you absolutely can check that out. But today we're just using the pre-cooked because it makes it super, super easy to use. So again, no temperatures or recipes, just in the microwave, 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it is a liquid. So that is what I've done. I just got my ice malt preheating here in the microwave. Okay, so it's nice and liquid, and now remember to keep all of those air bubbles out of your ice malt. You want to bring it to a boil when you melt it, and then you let it settle. So if it's boiling and bubbling in the microwave, that's great, because it'll bring out all of the air that may have gotten mixed in, but you always want to let it settle either in the microwave or on room temperature uh, until it's cooler so that it is not bubbling or boiling anymore, but it's still a nice liquid. So just wait a couple minutes until all those bubbles calm down, and you are ready to pour. Okay, so I have my cookie here that we're going to be using first for a nice clear window. Now you can pour this on a couple different uh, types of mats. I have a Silpat mat down here which would work, but sometimes the heat can make them bubble up a little bit and not be super even. So I'm going to be using my coated Teflon mat here. You can see it's just a nice shiny Teflon underneath that is non-stick, so it will not stick to the um, ice malt when it's cool. You don't have to grease it or anything. But alternatively, if you don't have either of those, you can use a piece of aluminum foil that's greased with some cooking 
setting spray and just wipe it off with a paper towel and that will work super great. So I'm basically just gonna pour my ice melt in the center of my baked cookie. Now remember ice melt's very hot, about 300 degrees. I do recommend wearing gloves when working with it because it is hot. You don't wanna stick your finger in it. Um, a cotton glove and then a nitrile or latex glove over top of that. That double glove will buffer the heat perfectly and you won't have any problem. But I'm still being very careful, of course, just like working with ovens and stoves. Okay, so I just have my cookie laid right onto my mat and I'm just gonna fill in enough to cover in this hole here that I cut out. Okay, so I'm just filling it in just to come to the top. If I need to, I can use my silicone tool to kind of help spread it into any crevices. This is a pretty smooth uh, shape. There's not really any cracks and crevices that it needs help filling in. I do have one little bubble here, so I am gonna use my chef's torch and just lightly torch that to pop it. And I'll do the whole thing just to make sure that there's no bubbles sitting on the surface. And really, that is it. This is going to make it so easy to make window cookies, to make shaker cookies, and um, just a whole bunch of different really unique techniques. And yeah, we're just gonna let this cool for probably about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how cool your room is and how big of a uh, ice malt puddle that you poured will depend on how long it takes. But generally about 10 to 15 minutes for cookies this size. And then we will decorate it with all, all of our decorations on top. Now I wanted to show you another variation on this, which is going to be using an ice malt transfer sheet to get a design inside. Now I'm going to talk all about different ways that we can impression the ice malt, that we can paint on the ice malt and a whole bunch of things, but one really easy way to get a design in the ice malt with very, very little kind of effort to it, it makes it effortless, is to use an ice malt transfer sheet. So I've already have one cut out here. This is basically a type of icing paper. Um, I developed this with icing images to make this an edible paper that's on a plastic backing. It's very thin and it's not like regular icing sheets. It's completely thin it would actually scratch off here if I were to scratch it so you can see that it's going to hold up really well under the ice malt because it's so thin it actually the ice malt will absorb into the surface and it will make the paper translucent now you can do the same technique with icing paper the thick uh, like the premium icing sheets but you have to keep in mind that those are thick they're not see-through so the ice malt well it will stick to it beautifully and you can't see through it so it's gonna be just more like a design in the background with a white background where these is actually going to become transparent when the ice melt absorbs into it. So I'm just gonna show you another variation. You don't have to necessarily pour this on the Teflon mat because it has a plastic backing, but I'm just gonna put it right next to my cookie here. This is a design from seamycakes.com. Um, this is one of my stained glass designs so that you don't have to cut out a shape or anything like that. Uh, you don't have to worry about you know specific window patterns or anything that's gonna fit in your windows. It's gonna fit any shape or size window. And all you have to do is put the ice melt right on top of it so the matte side of the paper is up the shiny side is down of that plastic. And then the same thing I just pour right on top. And like I said, this is a pre-printed design, but you can also get blank sheets right from icingimages.com and then you can print anything you want on your edible printer. So you can do different designs, you can make it exactly the um, stained glass pattern that you want to, you just have so many different options. So we'll let that cool as well for about 10 to 15 minutes and when it's cool the plastic backing will peel away and you'll be able to decorate your cookie however you want to. Okay, so it's in about 15 minutes. I'm just going to tap on my ice malt to make sure it is all set up before I unmold it. We're gonna slide this guy off to the side since he's still on that transfer sheet and just focus on this one first. So I'm just gonna peel the mat right away from my cookie and you can see that I just have that perfect glass window and it filled in exactly where I needed it to and I don't have to worry about trimming it or cutting it. I can fill in any shape or size that I want. Now I do have a little bit of a texture just from the mat that it was sitting on and I also want to show you guys how to imprint a texture. So of course you could just leave it glassy and clear just like this, but I wanted to show you how to get an etching inside the glass using a silicone impression mat. So I'm just flipping my cookie over and I'm going to grab my impression mat. So this is just another seamy mat here, but you can use any silicone impression mat and I'm just going to torch over the surface, and not only is that gonna get rid of that texture, but I can imprint it at that point too. So I'm just going to lightly heat. Okay. And then I'm gonna lay my impression mat right on. So I would do that torching step regardless if I, if I was imprinting it or not, because it does just melt away that little bit of texture that you can get from the mat and make your uh, windows super, super clear but it's also a very good point in which to 
lay your impression mat on. So just let that cool and just press things. Not so hard that I break my cookie, but just enough to get a little bit of a pattern and look how cool that is. I usually use the other side as my front and you can see that absolutely awesome etching. Sometimes you get some little air pockets in there. I can go back and just lightly torch over those if I want to. And I just think that it looks so cool. It just adds such an awesome depth into the piece and I do it on the back side like I said because I like it to be um, kind of reflected through the window. I think it looks really really awesome. Now I'm going to take off the transfer sheet design so you can see when it's cool it just falls right off. Again no trimming, no cutting, it makes it so easy. If this was a bigger piece of sheet I could save the excess if I wanted to to use for another project and then look how cool that is. You see how it really just got so transparent and beautiful and it gave you that instant pattern without you having to sit there and hand paint it or impression it or do anything. So this is really really efficient and quick way to get easy isomalt stained glass designs. So I'm going to finish up my cookie with some fondant decorations. Of course, you could pipe over this if you wanted to. You can decorate it however you want on top of the actual cookie. You could leave it on its own if you impressioned the dough. Um, but I'm just going to roll out a little bit of red fondant. And I'm going to imprint this the exact same way that I did with the isomalt. I'm going to use a silicone impression mat, but you can use any impression mat with fondant. After I cut it out using my template, and I'm just going to attach it onto the top with piping gel. After I imprint it with that beautiful brick, then to get some really awesome snow drifts, I'm going to use some white fondant. I like to use my templates to show exactly where I want to have the snow going. So I'm going to cut it out with my templates and then just freeform a little bit of a snow drift design here. I'm going to attach that on with piping gel as well. And then my super secret recipe for my edible snow is going to be actually be wafer paper. So I take wafer paper in a food processor. I mix it with a little bit of edible glitter and some pearl dust and I grind it up until it's nice and fine and powdery and that gives you the perfect edible snow to attach on top to add a little bit of sparkle. Then I'm just going to finish it up with some black paint. So I use a combination of gel color and some powdered color to get some really intense depth with the gel color. But then it also adds a really nice kind of soft look at the edges with the powdered color just to kind of shade in between each of the bricks. And with the white window cookie, I'm going to finish it off with a little isomalt holly and berries to go on the side. Okay, so we will be right back and I will show you how to turn your window cookies into shaker cookies. Are you ready to get started making your own ice malt pieces? Are you tired of tempering it yourself and going one or two degrees over causing the whole batch to turn yellow? Well now with Simi Ice Malt pre-tempered tiles, your worries can melt away. Simi Ice Malt is a sugar-free hard candy that I formulated to make all your ice malt projects a breeze. I developed Simi Ice Malt to be super easy to use, so that means no matter if you're a very beginner or a seasoned sugar artist, it's going to work great. No more worrying about temperatures or recipes, simply melt the ice malt in the microwave and bam, you're ready to start creating. Our ice malt is crystal clear, made to have no bubbles in it, and works in any climate, which means sugar sculptures that melt after an hour in humidity are a thing of the past. Our ice malt is featured every week on my Cakeflix live TV show, Sydney Sweet Adventures, and you can go to our website for tons of free ice malt tutorials, tips, and tricks. See Me Ice Malt is available in a wide array of colors as well as our signature Crystal Clear. You can find See Me Ice Malt on our website, seemecakes.com, as well as cake supply stores all over the world. Check out the list on our website of our esteemed international distributors to find See Me Ice Malt in a cake store near you. See you on my next sweet adventure. Okay, we're back and now we get to do our really awesome shaker cookies. So this is actually a technique of using isomalt to encase sprinkles so that there is a gap for them to move around and be shaken up and they look so awesome. So to start off, we have two cookies here that I already pre-did. So just like in the last step, how I took my pre-baked cookies and I filled them in with isomalt. So I have two cookies here that have just clear panes of isomalt on them. Now I also have a third cookie here uh, off to the side. This one is hollow. There's nothing in the center of them. I left it blank because I like to do a three layer of cookies. Since I make thinner cookies, I do three layers. Now, maybe your cookies you like to do a little bit thicker. You could potentially just have two layers and you're going to flip them over so that they are opposite. So one is up and one is down when you pour the ice malt. That way, when you flip it back over, uh, you don't have to fill the ice malt all the way to the top of your thick cookie. You just pour enough to cover the bottom. And then when you put it together, there will be enough of a little gap in between each for the sprinkles to be encased. But 
because I do a little bit thinner cookies, I'm going to be using three cookies for this. So like I said, I just poured these so that they are all completely cooled and clear. I'm going to put the bottom one off to the side for now and I'm just going to decorate the top one. So I'm going to use a little bit more of my white fondant and I'm going to use my template for this. So just unwrapping my white fondant here, I'm going to roll it out into a nice circle. I try and get it pretty thin. It depends on if you're going to be imprinting this with a design. If you're using an impression mat, I go a little thicker. If you want to make your fondant taste a little bit better, I'm using satin ice fondant, which actually tastes pretty good. Um, but you can use instead the oil-based flavorings. You can knead a little bit of that into your fondant and it makes your fondant taste fantastic. So if these are going to be eaten, it works really, really well. Okay, so I'm just going to cut out with my template here. Make this right in the center. Going to cut out first. Now you notice, unlike the snow globe, this one is not going to have a hole in the center of the template itself. And I'm actually going to use a cutter for this once I do it. And so I'm just kind of starting out by cutting out all of that fondant nice and carefully, all the way around with my exacto. There we go. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cutter. Let's see, I got a little bit of a rough edge here, so I'm just going to smooth it in so it's a nice circle. Perfect. I'm going to take my cutter, and so I'm just going to use this right on top of my circle. Instead of freehanding another circle in the middle, it just makes it a little bit easier. So I'm just going to punch out this circle here, and this is just a plain metal cookie cutter. And you can see it just takes that hole right from the center and that will be perfect. So I'm just going to attach that on to my top cookie using a little bit of piping gel. And of course you can use icing, you can use chocolate, you could use anything you want to attach it. Since these are just displays, I'm just using a little bit of piping gel. Okay, and just loosen this up with my little palette knife. Now before I put this on, I'm actually gonna cut the top of this off. Now I have this on here for the cookie part. Um, you can see that I have that little hook where the hook is gonna go, but I'm gonna freehand a hook here in a second. So I'm gonna cut the top off and this is just gonna create some more depth once we put the whole thing together. So I'm just going to loosen this up. I don't worry about it being too perfect because it's gonna stretch and move around once we put it on. And then I just spend a little bit of time making sure that this is all laid down nice and perfect around the edge. Okay, so I have my cookie all covered now. And then with this little excess of fondant that I had left over, I'm just going to roll this out into a little loop that we're going to use on the top. So I'm just gonna roll it between my hands, make a nice little snake here, cut the bottom off, and I'm just gonna see about how big I want this. Right about there. And that is just going to add some more depth once we paint our cookie on top of this whole thing. I just like to add that little hook and that little loop right onto the top. So remember I put piping gel on there so it's just sticking down really, really nicely and that's just going to add some depth in with our cookies. So I have my um, fondant on. I like to impression it a little bit. Uh, with the top edge here uh, with my little baby palette knife. You can also use um, a silicone tool if you want to. I'm going to use a sugar shaper because it's a little bit wider of an edge and it's nice and smooth. So I'm just going to imprint some lines here just to add that little bit of a riveted edge along the top. And that's just going to add some added realism onto here. Okay, now for putting it all together. So once your cookie is all decorated, or you could decorate it after if you wanted to, I'm just gonna grab my bottom layer of cookie and my center empty layer of cookie as well. And I'm just gonna start layering them. So starting with the bottom, I'm going to spread a little bit of liquid isomalt right onto the bottom cookie. And I'm gonna go kind of quick with this. I like to use liquid isomalt as a glue because it is a really, really good edible glue. And it's just gonna make sure that your cookies are going to hold together really strong, 
but you can also use chocolate or royal icing if you wanted to. Okay, so I'm just going to press this right on top, make sure it's nice and stuck. Perfect. Okay, now here is the key to making sure that your sprinkles don't stick to your isomalt. So you want to spray this whole thing with the clear edible glaze spray. The clear edible glaze is going to make sure that it locks out the moisture and humidity, which is what makes the ice milk sometimes get sticky or cloudy if you're in a humid area. So you give it a spray on the front and back of this piece now that we've attached it. You can spray it before you put that middle layer on too if you want to, and then you let it dry before you continue assembling. But by spraying the insides of your isomalt as well as the outside, it's going to make sure that your sprinkles don't stick. So I would also spray this finished piece here before I put it together, so making sure I spray the inside, and you can spray the outside now, or you could spray it afterwards. Okay, so this is the really fun part, which is choosing your sprinkles. So you want to make sure that your sprinkles are small enough to fit into this gap here, so I'm just going to sprinkle in some little sprinkles here. I don't like to fill it up too much because I want to make sure there's room for them to move around, but I'm just going to put some of those in there, and then I will attach my top layer of cookie using a little bit more ice malt. All right, and look how awesome that is. Your sprinkles are trapped right in the middle there. And then I will just finish up my cookie using a little bit of metallic paint. So I like to use a silver luster dust mixed with alcohol over the whole thing. I even like to paint it onto the cookie itself because it just, I think, ties the whole thing together really nicely with the fondant and it makes your finished shaker cookie. So now let's take some different techniques I showed you and combine them together. So you can see here that I have a cookie that I poured with a transfer sheet. So this one has the transfer sheet in the back of it. And then I have my front cookie, which I already pre-decorated it a little bit, but I just poured with the clear ice malt. You can combine techniques. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a middle section so I have some space for all of my sprinkles to mix. And you can layer all of the different kinds. You could do this with the imprinted ice malt. You can do it with any kind of variation and combination of different effects so that you can get some different kind of depth into your pieces. So imagine having the pattern in the back, having different decorations. I just have my little penguin friend here. I'm going to put some cute little snowflakes and sprinkles inside and then attach that right onto the top. So you can see it shakes just like a real snow globe. And to finish this off, I'll just paint it with some edible paints, some different silvers and blues, and of course, that sparkly edible snow on the little snow drift here to finish it off. I'm Sydney Galpern, owner of SeeMeCakes.com, and I'm a sugar artist. For the past 13 years, I've specialized in ice malt sugar, traveling the globe, teaching my techniques to the world. I'm the inventor of SeeMe Ice Malt, and both my parents now work full time for me, which is fun most of the time. Follow me every Wednesday on my journey creating awesome works of cake, chocolate, and sugar art. Whether I'm in the studio or hitting the road, come along with me on my sweet adventures. Watch Sydney's Sweet Adventures every Wednesday at 8 p.m. on CakeFlix Live TV. Okay, we're back and we're going to start on our next cookie, which is going to be a realistic wood slice or wood stump. So I just have a circle cookie cut out here. It doesn't really matter what size it is. This one's about three inches, but you could do any size that you want to. And I'm going to start out by using some chocolate fondant. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this dark chocolate fondant and I'm going to mix it in with some of my white fondant to create kind of a lighter toned brown. And that is what I'm going to cover this whole thing. So again, I'm using satin ice fondant, and I absolutely love their chocolate fondant. It smells and tastes so good. So I use this whenever I can because it's just delicious, and it works really, really nicely. So I'm just going to mix this in and get kind of a light tan brown to start with. 
just mixing in a little bit of vegetable shortening into here to get it all nice and pliable and so I'm just kind of mixing it until there's no more streaks left I'm gonna add in a bit more white fondant just to get a paler brown and then we're gonna roll this out So I'm just rolling out my fondant on my nice plastic mat here so that I can cut on it and not have to worry about the silicone getting cut through. Perfect. Okay, and then I'm just going to use a circle cutter to cut through to fit. Now you can use the same size as the cookie that you made. This one's actually a little bit smaller than the cookie, only because I want to make sure when we put the bark around the outside that it attaches to the cookie itself. It's going to be a little bit stronger. So I'm just going to attach that light brown fondant right onto my cookie using a little bit of piping gel, just like with the other cookies. And then I'll just use my rolling pin to make sure that it's going almost all the way out to the edges and it's nice and smooth and flat on the top. I'm not worrying about what the outside edge looks like because we are going to texturize this and we're going to add some dark brown chocolate for the bark around the outside edge. So before this dries um, and before we put our bark on the outside, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to texture this a little bit using my silicone sculpting tool, but you can use any sculpting tool that you want to. So I'm just going to kind of add some indents in my fondant. Now if you have an impression mat that you really like for kind of wood rings, you can use that. I'm just going to freehand it by adding almost like a ripple effect where I'm just getting bigger and bigger with my rings around the outside, not being too precise with them and making sure that they don't match up too perfectly. And there we go. I'm going to take the wider side of my tool and just widen those up a little bit just to make them look a little bit less purposeful, make them look a little bit more natural. And again, I'm not being too careful with this because I want it to look as organic as possible and I want it to be as realistic as possible and nature is not going to be perfect. So I'm just kind of adding in some texture. We have some lines going off of other lines. And then I'm going to add some notches kind of going through every once in a while connecting some of these lines together trying to offset them a little bit just to kind of add some contrast perfect now we're going to take instead of that light brown that we made we're going to take the original dark brown of that chocolate fondant and we're going to make a snake that's going to go around the outside edge so just kneading this till it gets pliable oh i cannot tell you guys how good this smells right now I'm just going to set that off to the side. And it depends on how thick or thin you want your bark aesthetically. I'm not going to go too thick because I don't want the dark color to be too distracting. I'm just going to roll out a nice log here. Again, not making sure that it's too perfect or anything because we want this to be a little bit imperfect. Okay. And that's going to wrap around perfectly. Okay. Attaching this on with some of our piping gel just along the outside edge and then I'm just going to wrap it around first cut off some excess and then I'm just going to press it and roll it up to that light brown fondant so it kind of hugs the outside edge of our cookie and it meets right up against that light brown fondant so that you can't tell that there is any gap in between them and then I'm just pushing it kind of into the cookie too to make sure it's going to stay nice and strong. Okay. There we go. Clean up some of this excess piping gel here. All right. And then we're going to put some notches in the outside just to start it before we texture. So just so it's not a perfect circle, I'm just going to put some kind of texture. Sometimes I'll line them up with the notches that I put on the top surface and I'm kind of pushing the dark brown into the light brown so that that's not a perfect line all the way in between them either. Making some big, some small, trying not to make them too symmetrical. And then as an added just a little bit of texture, 
I'm going to take a little bit of tin foil and crinkle it up into a nice tight ball and use that to texture the outside of our bark. And that's just going to give us a really natural kind of wood look. I'll just kind of keep going over it and mushing it over and over until it has that nice texture. I'm kind of avoiding the center so that I don't ruin any of the detail that I put in with my tool. But just kind of using this foil to my advantage here. If I lost some of my indents, I'll go back and put some of these on. And just kind of keep texturing it until it is the texture that I like. Perfect. So I'm going to go back over some of these indents here in case I lost any of them from handling it as I was going. And then I'm just going to, to finish this whole cookie up, I'm going to shade it with a little bit of petal dust. So just some nice warm brown petal dust, maybe even a little bit of black for the outside since that chocolate brown is so dark. I'll just shade in the rings to give it a little bit of that soft color and add a lot of shading and depth into this finished tree ring. And I'll finish it off with my little isomalt decoration of my holly and berries. So you can see the whole cookie doesn't have to necessarily be isomalt. You can have decorations on your cookies instead. Like I said before, uh, a lot of the times with isomalt, you could absolutely eat it. It's totally edible. It's basically just like a lollipop with a cookie edge is how I describe them to um, my clients. But you can definitely take and just add decorations onto your cookies with ice malt. It doesn't have to be the whole cookie. Uh, you can just have little bits. Now, a lot of the times the ice malt cookies are going to be kind of the focal point cookie. They're going to be like the, um, you know, show cookie. So if you're making maybe a couple of those and then you make a dozen or two or however many others that maybe tie in. So I could do a really fancy tons of ice malt you know that they may want to more keep rather than eat of you know your display cookie or your focal point cookie and then you can do something like this where you just have that little bit of like a hard candy decoration on top for them to actually eat. We are going to take a quick break but don't go anywhere because after the break I'm going to show you how to do a blown ice malt bubble for the nose of the Rudolph. Hi my name is Paul Bradford and welcome to module one baking and filling. After working and running businesses in the cake world for the last 25 years, I want to share some of the secrets on how to bake the perfect cake. So the first thing you're going to learn to bake in this module is three of the most popular cakes, from a Madeira cake, a rich chocolate cake, and of course, the traditional rich fruit cake. Then you're going to move on to learn how to make the most beautiful fillings for your cakes from my tried and tested buttercream recipe and my three most popular ganaches the dark chocolate ganache, the milk chocolate ganache and the white chocolate ganache. And the last stage of this module is how to cut and fill your cake. So you've got a single Medina cake here and a double barrel chocolate cake. I'm going to take you through all the different stages, how to get a level finish, how to fill the buttercream, how to fill the ganache, and of course how to get a lovely and crisp, sharp finish. Once you've completed this module, you're going to be confident in baking the perfect cake to suit any designer wedding cake or novelty cake. Welcome to module one, baking and filling. Okay, so while we have that chocolate brown, what we're gonna do next is do a cute little reindeer cookie. So the cookie that I have, you can see I have it already pre-covered. So all I did was I took that nice dark chocolate fondant, I covered my cookie using my template, and then I used that same template trick to kind of cut out a piece to cover over her face where the nose is gonna go. 
And then I just rolled out some teeny tiny little cones to layer onto the ears for some shading and then some itty bitty little strands to lay on for her individual eyelashes or his. He might have long eyelashes, that's totally fine. So um, you can see that I just kind of pre-covered my cookie with all the chocolate fondant and then we're going to add some ice malt accents. So for this guy we are going to do some antlers and we're also going to do a bubble for a nose. So a nice big Rudolph nose. So first off we're going to pour the antlers to get them cooling so I have my semi antler mold and I'm gonna be pouring the larger size of the antlers I just have some brown ice malt here now remember to color the ice malt you can mix in edible airbrush color and you could also mix in powdered color which is what I did for these which is why they are a nice opaque brown I mixed in white petal dust with my uh, brown airbrush color so that it's an opaque finish rather than just airbrush color which will give you a transparent finish so uh, you just want to make sure that you never ever mix in gel color because gel color will break down the ice malt but I'm just filling in my mold here and it's okay if it's a little bit messy these are teeny tiny little strands so I'm just using my tools and you can use also a toothpick or a skewer to kind of push it into all of the crevices and then we'll go ahead and let those cool remember to torch the back if you have any bubbles on the surface and we'll let those cool for about 10 to 15 minutes at room temperature before we unmold them I'll torch a little bit around the outside edge just to clean up any rough edges with the torch it will just smooth itself away and then we can attach those on with some liquid isomalt now if you wanted to add an extra support on you can dip and stick a toothpick or a piece of uncooked spaghetti and attach it to the back of the antlers and that way they can stick to the back of the cookie. You could also use that if you are inserting them into cupcakes or into a cake. You can add a support that way if you want to. But it depends on how your cookie is going to be displayed and how much it's going to be handled as far as how much or little support you want to add into your cookies. Okay, we're back and it is finally time to make our blown ice malt bubble for the reindeer's nose. So I'm just going to lay out my silicone mat here. So this is a silicone baking mat. I like this texture a little bit better. If you guys have seen me do pulled ice malt before, um, this is a little bit easier to pull on. So I'm going to pour out some transparent red ice malt first. And this is what we're going to use to make the bubble for the center of the Rudolph's nose. And so I'm just going to kind of do a quick little... Uh, pulling here of getting it from a liquid to a solid by just folding in some cool air. You guys have probably seen me do this before in other videos, but if you haven't, you can check out my ice malt pulling video. Um, I have a ice malt basic series on my YouTube channel, so you can check out how the all the fundamentals of pulling there. But basically, we're just folding this and folding this until it cools down and turns into a clay that we can sculpt with, or in this case, that we can use to blow our bubble. And I also actually have an ice malt bubble basics video on there as well so if you want to check that out uh, for any refreshers or pointers that will definitely be helpful but essentially I'm just going to turn this into a clay first now if you didn't want to venture into blowing ice malt you can use the sphere mold so like I've used it a couple of times the different sphere molds I believe on one of my first episodes where I did the ice malt basics with the under the sea sculpture I used the um, small sphere mold for the bubbles around the seahorses um, and you can just pour it into the mold it makes it super super easy but I'm going to do the pulled and blown version or you could use another medium if you wanted to you could do bottled chocolate or fondant or gum paste but I just think that blown ice malt has such a beautiful finish and with a little bit of practice it's really not too hard so I'm just gonna keep folding this until it becomes a clay still being very careful I still recommend wearing gloves for this technique perfect so see how it's not sticking anymore I'm gonna go ahead and just fold in a little bit of cool air just to get it a little bit firmer so it's not quite so soft and it just comes with practice. Remember the best part about ice malt is you can remelt it over and over and practice as many times as you want to Perfect. So I'm just going to roll it into a ball once it feels like it's cooled down enough so that it's pliable, but it's not going to be so soft that it just falls off of my pump. This is my Simi Sugar Pump that I'm going to be using, so I'm just heating up that little seasoned end. I have a YouTube video on that as well where I season the ends of my pumps so that it sticks a little bit better, but essentially I just put cuts in it with the scissors and then dip it in liquid isomalt. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just insert it about a third of the way into that ball of ice malt and then I'm just pinching around the bottom to make sure it's nice and stuck on and secure. I'll move it onto the white so you guys can see a little bit better. Alright, perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to start inflating a little bit of air at a time, not too much, just one pump at a time and then I'm actually going to stop there it goes and there's a little bit of a delay between when the air goes in and sometimes it takes even longer than that so I'm just going to do little pumps 
of air. As I see the pressure going up, I can start to kind of cool it and shape it with my hand. The pipe is inside the bubble right now, so if I go to cut it off, it's not really going to cut through the pipe. So I'm just going to start stretching a stem at the bottom and just pressing it upwards and just adding little bits of air as I go. You can use your fan if you need to to cool it down a little bit as you go, but generally at room temperature, you're going to have a pretty good amount of time to work with this, so I only use the fan at the end. Now I'm keeping in mind how big I want this. I don't want it too big so that it doesn't fit onto the nose. I don't want it to cover up the whole cookie, so I'm not going to go too huge. Just going to grab my cookie here so I can kind of start to size it. And whenever it slumps over, I just kind of pick it back up, just like you would with blown glass, how they keep turning it and rotating it to make sure it's going to stay nice and round. I'm going to be looking at it from the front, from the top like this, so I want to make sure it looks good from that angle. And I'm just going to continue adding teeny tiny puffs of air, making sure that there's a little gap here that I'll be able to cut above the end of the pipe, and making sure it all stays nice and even as I make it bigger. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and cool it down, and then once it is completely cool, I'll just rotate it for a couple minutes in front of my fan, but you can also do this at room temperature if you don't have a fan. The fan just makes it go a little faster. Once it's all completely cooled and it's completely solid and I know that it's not going to deflate when I set it down or make a dent with my fingers once it comes off of the pump, I'm just going to heat up the very base of the bubble where uh, just above where that pipe is, and I will cut it right through with scissors. To attach the nose onto the cookie, I use a little bit of liquid ice malt as glue. I like to use some red petal dust for a little bit of color on the reindeer's cheeks and ears. I also like to add just a tiny bit of that edible glittery snow just to the top of his nose, the antlers, the ears, anywhere that snow might naturally catch just to add a cute little touch. Thank you guys so much for watching my holiday cookies episode. I hope that even if you aren't necessarily making holiday cookies yet, you can apply some of these techniques to so many different projects in your own bakery that's gonna fit exactly what you do. Make sure to tune in next week for another Christmas in July themed project. I am super excited about next week. I'm not gonna give too much away, but we're gonna be making an ice melt topper that is going to be amazing, particularly for frozen themed cakes. So I will see you in two weeks, and until next time, keep life sweet. Bye guys.